searching for this all my life because my life i've been looking for a boy who can treat me right your dark hair because i so bright and all right Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Shenanigans. I'm back in the studio this week with my girl, Kiki Monique, on the co-host, Mike. How we doing? Great. We are joined today by two ladies who we've all been seeing on our For You pages for the last few years, and now they are everywhere. There are billboards on Sunset, like giant billboards on Sunset across all pop culture, even Good Morning America. So please welcome from Hulu's Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, Taylor Frankie Paul and Macy Neely. How are we doing? Good. Hello. Good. Thanks Thank for you having for having us. having us. No, thanks for being here. We spent the weekend binging this season. How was it? It's so good. Okay, good. Yeah, you're about to have like the number one reality. You're kidding. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I mean, I guess that's my thing. <laughs> <friend. I guess laughs> I'm learning that's my word. But like, I guess it's shocking when you hear someone talk about like, your show that way. Yeah. Like, I feel like know. it's weird when you're in it. It's like, oh, we're just like normal. Like, there's nothing special, you know? And then, like, when you film, I was like, this shit's crazy. Like, yeah, what like, were you filming? Yeah. Like, almost like a home video. Like, we're used to making, you know, TikToks. We're like, yeah. okay, this will be cool, different, you know? Yeah. But then when people talk about it, they're like, it's so good. We're like, oh, well, tell us more. We don't know. Like, you yeah. Know? No, it's definitely the best new show on Hulu oh, in shoot. a while. That's like, exciting. That is okay, exciting. so what was like your favorite part? <sighs> Oh, Who's like, your favorite character? I mean, yeah. uh, well, I like most of you. Okay, I won't good. say who oh, most. most. Okay, keyword. there's a few where I'm like, mm, I don't know, okay. but we won't say who because I'm not mean. Tell us after. Yeah, I'll tell you. But after. the villains are still good. Like, <laughs> no, even, totally. You still are like, they I appreciate are. you as a villain. Totally. Yeah, I loved it. Opened 100%. up with you girls, and yeah, like I just, oh my god, it's I've I've never I don't think had this many cards for oh a podcast gosh. because. Oh. There's just so much I want to ask. I Let's do it. I'm so curious about so many things. But what has this been like for you? You know, I mean, we have the premiere and you're in L.A. for the premiere party. I mean, are you you're used to, you know, getting recognition online and stuff. Mm -hmm. But has it been different with now the show premiering? Yeah, it doesn't feel real to me. I feel like when we we're looking at our billboard yesterday, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, that's us on the billboard. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't seem real. Like, I don't I don't know how to feel. It's just like crazy. Yeah. I don't believe it. Mostly, yeah, it hasn't like hit. We're like, I guess, like we just were talking about, like, it's not something we're like thinking we're making a home video. Like, we're friends. We're like, mm -hmm. no, it's yeah, no, like, no big deal. But I think when things start happening, they're like, hey, your car's going to be there. Your hotel's going to be like, in what world? Like, like, it's just weird. Like, we're not used to it. So yeah. it's like, really cool. Yeah, because TikTok famous is way different than oh, reality TV different. famous. Yeah, it's not even oh, totally. considered, I guess, famous, if you will. Like, we live in a very small bubble, though. So, like, mm -hmm. Utah, people do come up to you and they say hi and pictures and stuff. And that's kind of cool. But, like, yeah, it's a whole nother level. It's like it TV. Is. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Very totally. pinch me moment. I think we got to the hotel yesterday. I'm like, wait, we're here because we have a show coming out. Like, this is crazy. Like, yeah. this is our room that they got for us. Like, it's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And people it's, are excited. They're like on the, they're on the street. Like, hey, we're so excited to watch Bin yeah. We're like, oh, you know, but like, it's just exciting. And it's yeah. just like, it's, I don't know. It's a new it's world yeah. for sure for us. I'm I, sure you're, you guys are used to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I will say there's something just so beautiful about a first season show mm. and the cast, you know, when they don't know what they're in for yet yeah. and you're just <laughs> so authentically you yeah you know it's like the cameras aren't even there mm -hmm. and i i love a good first season yeah i feel good but i also feel like i'm also like so worried for you because i also know what comes with <laughs> oh, it's know. like everyone's gonna know and love you yeah. but you're gonna get equal amounts of hate just because oh, that's yeah. the way it goes sure. but i'm sure you yeah. I mean, on tiktok you got the same yeah yeah that's I've, one positive thing is we kind of are used to the hate already from yeah. doing like the influencer world. You get a lot of hate and I know it's probably like double that, but I'm like, at least we have like a taste of the hate. So <laughs> yeah, totally for sure. And I feel like most of like the headlines I, you know, that I was known for are like really bad. And like, so I feel like can't I'm get worse. Yeah. What it can, can be worse? or it can't. Can't. Okay, good. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, oh no. In my head, I was like, okay, that can't be worse than what I've no, gone through. I don't think so. Okay. So I wanted to ease in and start with a fun little game of superlatives. Okay. So whoever is the best fit among your cast, any of the girls, you can also name yourself. Okay. But I'm going to give you a list of things and then just shout out who you think it best fits. Okay. It doesn't have to match. It's not like a BFF game. So. Okay. Best hostess. Oh, mm. I probably me because I feel like I host the most. Yeah, yeah. not because I think I'm the best, but I feel like I always end up hosting. Yeah, 
Okay, Maybe. sure. Who's the best dancer? Jen. Yeah, Jen. Okay. Best TikTok dancer. There is a different art to the TikTok dancing, I feel like. And maybe we flip that and put Whitney as the best dancer and Jen as the best TikTok dancer. Because yeah. Whitney did professional wow. dance. Okay. okay. But she's like an actual dancer. Gotcha. Yeah, and she's really good on TikTok. So, yeah. She's both. both. I think it would have to be both Jen of them. Yeah. 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 Who's the most punctual? Oh, on time? Jesse. Yes, Jesse. Who has the most enviable wardrobe? I would say probably Jesse for me. Yeah, Jesse or Demi. Yeah, Demi. Yeah, Demi they're both very cute all the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who is your favorite spouse or significant other? We'll probably our own. Yeah, or our yeah. own. Are you saying if we couldn't choose like our own? Like someone else's? Like oh. <sighs> during the show, I was like, I want to see what you say first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we could go with least favorite. <laughs> that might be too easy though. <laughs> <laughs> I liked all of them. I feel like for me, for like I guess Dak- Dakota was co- getting close with like Brett, so I'd say Brett, yeah. and he was like really helping us through a hard time. So probably him for that reason. I would say he's a safe choice as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But I feel like my husband is probably the closest with Connor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who would you say is the peacemaker? Me, I think. Yeah, Macy. Most generous, Jesse. Yes, Jesse. I was going to say Michaela as well. And yeah, Michaela. Yeah. Biggest saint and biggest sinner. You're the biggest sinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah there's the biggest sinner. <laughs> For now. Biggest saint is probably Jen as far as like the yeah. most Mormon. <laughs> yeah. I'm the biggest sinner for now. Like yeah, I think, you know, now. if there was a season two, I might not make that cut. You know? Yeah. Oh, that's true. True. T. Who has the best soda recipe? I didn't know this was even a thing with all the different <laughs> syrups and flavors oh, and all oh, yeah. that. I mean, I would like to th- say myself because I like what I make. But... So what's your go-to order? So I have two. Okay. My number one that I always get is a Diet Coke with fresh lemon and lime, which is just basic. Mm-hmm. But then like if I want a treat, I'll get a Dr. Pepper with sugar-free vanilla, sugar-free coconut and cream. It's Ooh. so good. Okay. And sometimes if you add a little raspberry puree in there, I'm not even a raspberry girl, but like the mixture, so good. Okay. okay. It sounds gross. Everyone who hears it, they're like, ew, like cream. It and sounds like, interesting. I swear to you, it's like a treat. For okay. Sure. All right, I believe yeah. you. Um, mine's pretty boring. It's just like the diet Dr. Pepper with coconut and lime. So it's just like the dirty Dr. Pepper. Yeah. yeah. That's good though. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea that soda. Was Are there a lot of to Utah. Utah. Utah with all this soda? Yes. I just feel like there's so much soda drinking. Okay, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, they're everywhere. It's weird. It's like coffee shops, basically. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or, Who's the thirstiest? thirstiest? You can take this literally, or you know, for attention. Thirstiest? Oh, so like clout chaser? Yeah, sure. Okay, you go. You answer that. Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, in that in the the filming sense, maybe Whitney. Maybe from the show filming yeah. perspective. Okay. Best and worst Mormon. Ooh. Worst Mormon. Did you say me? I, I don't know. Well, I, Jesse's like an ex-Mormon, so maybe her. Yeah. Okay. And the best, again, Jen. Jen. Yeah. Or Whitney. Yeah, Whitney. Mm-hmm. Who most desires to be Queen Bee of Mom Talk? Whitney. Whitney. I think Demi's next. But oh. who's, who's the actual Queen Bee? Probably Taylor. Maybe. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would say it's the creation of Mom Talk. Yeah. Taylor's not as involved anymore. I would say just because I feel like you're kind of distracted. Distracted. <laughs> yeah, among other things. Yeah. But yeah. Jesse's been pretty like she like in things. She like owns a business, right? So she likes to like coordinate things. She's very good at like organize uh, organizing mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Okay. So she kind of takes charge. Who is the cutest baby mama? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say yourself. I'm like me? I'm getting yeah. enough. <laughs> Um, All of us. I was gonna say Michaela. Yeah. I mean, she just like is like a the like she's a really good mom and the epitome of like yeah. motherhood and with her kids and like really raw. So yeah. I'd say not her. Okay. Most improved from when you started filming till now. As far as like in life, because I would filming? say for me, I would say Michaela because when we first started, she was very quiet, mm-hmm. and then at the end, she called. I don't know if it's on camera, but she called Layla a bitch, and it was a proud moment for me as like her friend. I was like. You said that. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Yeah, she like got comfortable. Yeah, like yeah. she like started speaking what she was feeling, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I would say her for me. Okay. Yeah. Same. All right. Who would you say is the biggest chameleon for the cameras? Who changes the most when you're filming? <gasps> to me, I feel like there's multiple people. It could be who. Um, I feel like Jen did a little bit. 
Oh, um, her too, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Whitney did a little bit, and Demi did a little bit. Yeah. They just, like, I mean, Demi's, like, I love her. She's so chill, no, but, like, so on cool. camera, she, like, came out full force on people, oh, and I was, like, oh, I didn't see The Park City trip, I was in shock. Yes. I was yeah. Like, so entertaining, though. I was like, where was so this? I thought you no. were a quiet girl. <laughs> yeah, because when we filmed like the pilot, like she came in towards the end of our filming the pilot and she was like quiet. really quiet. She's like, you guys, we shouldn't cuss and like we shouldn't. And I was like, from coming from you? And then in the show, I was like, okay. So we were worried almost with her going into the show. Like, are you really going to show your personality? And then like Park City, I was like, gosh, damn. I'm, like, tone it down. Yeah, no, she came out full force. I loved yeah. it. I was like, full ooh, fire. Be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you definitely saw that. I mean, she said she was a level nine out of ten oh, Mormon, she's not. right? <laughs> actually, I should not speak for her, actually. That is so funny. Oh. You know what I mean? I love it. She could say that. She That's knows. comical. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I have... Gosh, a million things to yeah, ask let's you. Let's do it. So we're going to take a quick little break and then we're going to get into all of it. All right, y'all. So the weather is finally cooling down. Summer is coming to an end. And one ritual that deserves to be added to your fall priorities is daily hydration and energy from Liquid IV. I love that these packets are so itty bitty. I could fit it in my bra. I could put it in any little purse or clutch. Great to take when I'm traveling on an airplane when I need to stay hydrated, which is always, not just when it's hot out. And Liquid IV, their hydration multiplier plus energy, it delivers 100 milligrams of natural caffeine plus three times the electrolytes of any leading sports drink. So you can accomplish all the things you want and need to do. And they have combined their popular peach flavor, which let me tell you, is my personal favorite. They also have blackberry, which I know was highly requested. And these just awaken your senses and they are going to keep you coming back for more. If you're like me, you love peach. It's so easy. All you do is tear, pour, and live more. One stick plus 16 ounces of water hydrates better then water alone, so you're getting extra hydrated. Start a new fall ritual with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEY at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEY at liquidiv.com. And now it's time to shift my wardrobe from summer to fall. And for me, It's always a challenge when the seasons are changing. We're going from crop tops to hoodie weather coming up soon, which I'm so excited about, but it is a bit of a challenge. And luckily, I have Quince. They offer timeless, high quality items that I adore. Summer is obsessed with. They're so cozy, comfy on her. And it just ensures that my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget because one thing I hate spending a lot of money on is clothing. They have all of the items priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, premium fabrics and finishes, which we absolutely love in the Honey Davies house. Summer and I have gotten everything from cute little matching legging crop top sets to really nice cashmere sweaters. They have starting from like $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops. My favorite though are the sweaters from Quince and we've just upped her wardrobe. So make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash honey for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash honey to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash honey. All right. So to give some backstory to those listening who have maybe been living under a rock, Taylor and Macy, please correct me if I'm wrong here with anything, but I'm going to try and sum it up just to give the listeners a little heads up. Okay. So Taylor had started posting on TikTok with some fellow mom friends, which resulted in the hashtag mom talk. 
And then you all built like very successful followings on social media, Mm -hmm. brands, businesses, millions of followers, like total Mm -hmm. internet sensation. Mm -hmm. But then Taylor and her ex-husband parted ways and you felt the need to be honest with the audience you had built. So you went on a live Mm -hmm. and her fans saw the raw truth where she opened up that her and her husband had been part of a group that had been participating in soft swinging, like swapping partners, Mm -hmm. and uh, that you had crossed the line going further with someone than was allowed. Mm -hmm. So there was this implication that this swinging group was within the mom talk group, which then led to this massive scandal, took over TikTok. I mean, it was all across pop culture. So I assume then that got the attention of production companies to want to tell this story for the show, Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Does that sound pretty accurate? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get into more of the show shortly, but I just, I I have to ask about the swinging Mm. aspect of it. Like how does that conversation come about? Do you just literally ask your friend if they would be down or... No, this is like the most asked question. I think <laughs> like, people are I'm so, so like, curious. I know even like couples are like, how does that even happen? Yeah. But honestly, we it wasn't even a conversation. It was like we were all partying and drinking. And I think they were just like, hey, you guys should kiss like me and my friend. And uh-huh. so party girl me was like, OK, like not a big deal. Like I kissed her. And then it kind of like escalated at every party. Like do this, do this pictures in your lingerie. And it was kind of just like we were drinking. And my ex actually hadn't partied. He partied the first time at age 28 or 29, if I remember right. So it's like all new to him. Mm -hmm. And I can't speak. Well, I won't speak for them, but I will say I assume that this was all like fun and games because growing up in the LDS, you know, culture, they um, didn't drink and they didn't party. And some of these people, their spouses are their first person they had ever been with, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think opening up this can of worms was like, oh, like what college kids do. You know, it's like, this is so fun. Let's experiment. And so I think it was spicing up everything for people. Um. And and it just ask like um, it just went it got further and further every party. So yeah. that's what I wondered too because I feel like a lot of the Mormon community they get married right after high school, so you yep. don't get that college yeah. experience. So mm-hmm. it made sense to me that like why wouldn't you if you have a group right. of young friends like yeah. that are all hot? Because yeah. I don't know why you all are all hot, but you all are hot. <laughs> 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 and everyone has such good hair. Oh my god. Seriously. Jesse. Yeah, going Jesse. to Jesse. Yeah, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, we are. That. Yes, exactly. So my husband was actually raised Mormon in New Zealand. I don't know if you no knew way. that. I know that. Yeah. 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 So they're not really a part of the church anymore. But just, I mean, he didn't really drink or anything until his mid-20s and coming to America and whatnot. So yeah. I started watching this this weekend. He was like, wait, a Mormon show? And then he was actually into it. So yeah, I, I liked did. that we had a new show we could watch together. That's so funny. That's crazy. Yeah. That's cool. But, okay, so what exactly, back to the swinging, um, what is soft swinging? Is it like everything but? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. And I did not come up with that term, by the way. I <laughs> everyone has asked me, I'm like, I mean... That's what it was starting to get called. And so I, I yeah. someone must have known and yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah. Was this exclusive to the mom talk community or like it, there's like the mom swinger group, the mom talk group. Did they ever cross into each other's territory? Yes. One from mom talk was there. OK. Is this one that is no longer a part of the group? Yes. And and I've talked about that. It's like really a sticky situation because I want to like respect them right to an extent you know they out themselves in a lot of ways but Mm -hmm. it's my story and so like I really try to tell a story as best as I can without like giving up their names and lives you know well I feel like I mean Miranda and Camille is it Mm -hmm. who uh, recently I saw some stuff online so uh, one of my best friends Lala she's from Salt Lake City Mm -hmm. and her brother is friends with Miranda so I was getting some extra tea that we will not spill no, on the podcast you're not even gonna share. out of respect. I think that's unfair. I, think I know. I mean, it's not my story to tell, but I understand why yeah. she didn't want to do the show. You got to tell us after that. You know, some secret lives maybe just want to stay secret. Yes. Mm-hmm. Not be well, on you TV. you did a video, though. Where <laughs> she was saying she turned down the show uh-huh. and you were like, I can't remember the TikTok you did, but you were yeah. basically like, that's bullshit. No, and, and they did turn down the show. I think they were saying because it was family. So to me, it was like just frustrating. Like, but that like wasn't the case. Like you can kind of see in her text. She's saying 
well, I wish I would have known. I wish I could know the verdict if Taylor's in it or not. Then I'd make my decision. So in her head, I think she might have done it if I hadn't been oh, in it. Oh, she wants no parts of you mm-hmm. around. Yeah. So I think additionally, they didn't want to have to answer to everything that happened. Like, and they knew if they went in the show that they would have to answer for everything because there right. were a lot of lies when everything first came out from many people and they would get called out on that. And so uh-huh. I think that would maybe That's be part of it. a shame, though, because I feel like what we learned from Scandival and that whole yeah. thing with Raquel, Rachel not coming back to the next season and yeah. tell her story, other people are going to tell the story. Totally. Still going to talk. Yeah. 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 And, and and that's where Mom, Mom talk. talk does get involved. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, you know, them, Miranda, like, uh, it's, see, yeah, I can't, like, it's so hard. <laughs> I can't, like, I, <sighs> people. Yes. People, you know, brought people to their homes and like we're telling lies and like the story like nothing happened blah 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 and then like mm-hmm. mom talk comes to me and they're like is this what happened and I was like no and so that's kind of how they all got like wrapped up into it yeah as well. for sure yeah yeah they wrapped us in and we were all involved in a way well not like yeah. that but Just on social media they yeah. involved how involved <laughs> on yeah. the backlash end afterwards <laughs> so would you ever spill it all like write a book one day a little black book of like the details Maybe I feel like I've been so open with the details. I mean, I don't really know like what's missing. I mean, unless someone like asks me, but like I feel like I'm pretty open. I've been really open with it. You mean like name dropping? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe if they out of themselves, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, which two they pretty much have, honestly. Um, but yeah, if they wanted to come clean and like admit that, then maybe. But I feel like I'm just like stuck in this gray area of like yeah. not being able to. Like, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, you are a really open book. I mean, we find out in the season that, like, your mom knew you were sleeping with your boyfriend in high school. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it just seems, like, so opposite of what I know about Mormon. Like, how did you have such an open relationship with your mom? I mean, even though she still, like, will come at you and be like, are yeah. you doing this all wrong? But you seem to be able to tell her things. Well, I I feel like I wasn't able to tell her. Did we have, like, a conversation in there? It was, you know, she I said, you know, I knew that you and Tate were sleeping. Or she knew Tate and I were sleeping together in high school. Oh, okay. So I met him when I was 21. Okay. So, yeah, before marriage. Got it. Yes. she probably. I think she just assumed, like, at that point I was sleeping with him. Um, I actually didn't lose my virginity until, like, after high school. Oh, okay. So, like, I I was, you know, good in that sense, I guess. Um, But... Yeah, I wasn't open with her. I was very closed off and like didn't share because I was scared, you know, to like admit those things. And I think when everything broke out, then I was very like, obviously, I'm open with her now. But yeah, it was a lot to get there. But we were, she's kind of like really laid back Mormons. Like my mom like knew that I had drank alcohol and like, of course, they're not happy about it. But like they had partied before too. So I was more like in a laid back family where I think some in the cast Mm -hmm. were like grown up in a very devout, like absolutely not. You know? Yeah. Now, do you drink? No, I used I went through a little party phase okay. for a Mormon, you know, yeah. back in college, right. but not anymore now. Yeah, crazy college days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. in the first episode, I did love to see that you were the one who was really welcoming Taylor back mm-hmm. into the group. Did you feel like some of the ladies were nervous to associate with her after the scandal? I think so, but I feel like a lot of us are just open-minded people. There were certain people in the group who did like ostracize you and were like didn't want to even be involved with her name. Definitely wasn't me, Michaela, or Whitney. We just were like, who cares? You know, mm-hmm. we like that Taylor was at least telling the truth and being open. And I feel like when we did talk, I got to know Taylor actually better after the scandal than I knew her before the scandal. Yeah. And so I was like, wow, we're actually more like than we than I thought we were. And I was able to relate to her a lot and understand where she's coming from. Because I'm like, yeah, you made mistakes, but no one wants to feel like this. Like yeah. people were like shunning her. Like you should have seen our group chats. Like people were being brutal to her. So I was like, this <laughs> is a joke, you know? Yeah ridiculous well it was great training for reality tv you know yeah it, i don't think it could get worse the amount of drama <laughs> that was going on then was <laughs> insane. so bad so bad yeah like, i was like i hate my life i mean so you could sad. just probably publish that as a book the group chat right read that. oh my god <laughs> literally just yeah. three shots. Oh it was my like gosh. it's been fun yeah. <laughs> the peace sign i was like oh my gosh people trying to sue you yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. last thing on the swinging would you ever entertain it again no okay so how did this show come about? Was it in the works before the scandal or did that really put attention on the group to make a show about it? I think it was just after the scandal, right? I mean, like, I know you got approached, you and the other two girls got approached, but it didn't go anywhere, right? Yeah, it was like, what are we Like an introduction about? call type thing, you know, mm-hmm. right? 
You know, I actually did get interviewed for the Housewives. Des- or what is it? No. Salt Lake City? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh. I had an interview, I think a few months prior, maybe a little longer. And basically I was told, I don't know, a little birdie told me like, yeah, you didn't have enough drama in your life. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get it because I was obviously not admitting to like what we were up to, right? Yeah. So I was like, just like giving them. It worked out for the better, anyways. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Imagine. I know. I know. It'd be amazing. <laughs> and then it like was after the scandal where like all of us were just getting DMs from like producers and different things. And like, we mm-hmm. want to do a show. Like, they asked me, Michaela, and Whitney to do a show with us three, which was so random. And our manager, who also manages Danielle, was like, no, just wait. Just wait. Let me handle it. So we're like, all right. Yeah. Put our faith in her. And she pulled through. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever do a Housewives type of show? Do you watch those shows? Don't. I don't either. Yeah. No. Um, but I feel like I good? want to because I heard the they're Salt Lake good. One? Oh my God, it is That's good. what everyone's so saying yeah. is the Salt Lake Are you really not friends with any of the Salt Lake City Housewives? No. Uh-uh. I've seen like one of them at um, like an influencer event. Okay. But I don't like know them. Or I think I've gotten, we got invited to Whitney Rose's Yeah, we, event, we know the names. Yeah. Okay. We were like yeah. busy or something. I don't know. We couldn't go. But like we know of them. But, yeah. But like I don't. Yeah. I haven't seen it. It's so good. I heard it's really good. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to watch Especially it Especially the past season. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's what everyone's been saying. Yeah, so good. Deep- <laughs> yeah, we should watch it. So when I was watching the first episode, I mean, obviously the pilot was how long ago? I mean, Whitney's hair changed colors yes. and styles how many <laughs> times? Was, oh, yeah. This the time continuity la- was so off. This time <laughs> no. two years ago. It was September. Like, okay. End of September 2022. Okay. It was a pilot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, we go from that and then we have Taylor's arrest and then it picks back up and you're like very pregnant. <laughs> oh, gosh. What I'm was... not excited to see that. <laughs> Sorry. The oh. jump. I, I The jump scare. Like, I... Oh, yeah. Oh, because you haven't seen it all yet. No. And I know it's just like a different person. It's uh-huh. two years prior because like, I totally. was like going through my divorce. So I would like right. super underweight to that. So yeah. I'm like, did you have to stop filming from the time of, of the arrest to the time? Like, because it just seemed like a large gap. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It was on hold. Because yeah. of the arrest? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. We were supposed to film yeah. March 2023 from what I understand. Oh. And it got delayed. And so we didn't film till January 2024. Oh, yeah. wow. That's shocking. Because I feel like that's when we pick cameras up when people right. get arrested. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. we had all of the body cam footage, oh, which yeah. was wild. How did you feel when you found out that that was going to be a part of the show? I was fine with it because it was so public record and I don't know okay. if you like knew it. it was like all over TikTok. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, like at this point, everyone has Everyone's seen already it. seen it mostly. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, with the, the body cam footage, mm. I feel like you've been very open about your struggles. And did you feel like this was a rock bottom moment for you that's really changed you? Yes, absolutely. I feel like that night, I don't know like how to word this correctly because I'm like, I feel like that's not it sucks to say it but like that night almost had to happen in order for like me to like wake up I feel like I was in this like I don't know what you'd call it but I was just standing so still I was in so much pain like I couldn't like move forward and still like to this day trying right um but I feel like it hit like rock bottom where I'm like wake up like go get yourself help mm-hmm. like therapy I got into e- EMDR um I love that. classes immediately and it was just like and I also got on medication like antidepressants like I was kind of against them and like no, I can do this and I can do this. And I like just couldn't. And so I'm like, I needed help to like take that edge off a little bit. So I got um, all that help, you know, and it, it's been a, yeah, a big wake up call. So I'd say that night, unfortunately, had like not had to happen, but it happened for good. I, I ended up coming out better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah I think as a sure. friend too, you can see her progression even through the show. Like she's such a different person from when we filmed the pilot. Until, they think like, I'm now. boring. They're like, uh, Taylor, like, you know what they saw? I miss the spice sometimes, but it does come out. It still comes out. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. when you film with Dakota, it comes out. Trust. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I love you her. You definitely see it. <sighs> and Whitney, too. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh, I mean, okay. yeah. You know. I feel like I was so calm and boring. I was like, oh. Uh, she was very calm when she was pregnant, like, compared to normal, maybe. Yeah, I feel like I'm very, like, sassy and I feel like yeah. that was like just so yeah I don't think it was like too spicy I think it was more just like uh what's going on like, yeah and she's coming off a little more spicier and you're just kind of like oh these are the facts you know what maybe yeah. it's my antidepressants that really kicked in and they're like <laughs> <laughs> now you're leveled out I'm like chill again <laughs> like yeah maybe I don't know. right I can't imagine though filming 
pregnant because I was pregnant in the pandemic when we were on break. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then, you know, we had Janet pregnant on the first season of The Valley. Lala pregnant right now. No. And especially now that I'm learning about the th- I'm learning about the things that happen to your body when you're pregnant. Yeah. I saw something about your eyeballs change shape and you can't fit your contacts in. Like what? your feet grow to new sizes. My feet grew. People talked my about. My li- didn't. They said something about lightning vagina or. Yeah, lightning I get that. Bo- that what hurts. is it called? Like lightning, lightning crotch. crotch. What is. <laughs> oh. It's like a Wait, zing what? of lightning up your coochie. Like it's you just, just like, all, it's like a spark. I got like, like 12 DMs about lightning crotch. No, it's a real thing. I got it really bad my last pregnancy. Interesting. Yeah. How it many comes out of nowhere. You have? Just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I had a very traumatic labor, so I don't oh, think no. I'll ever be pregnant again. But so hard. it's okay. I have an angel. Yeah. I, all you need. Yeah. Yeah. I was also interested. I need to ask Jesse. I'm like, uh, I've never heard of a labia, labia plasty. Yes. Uh-huh. I've heard of it because I thought some an, another housewife, Sonia did it, I thought. Oh, really? So, like, one of the housewives did it. Yeah. The yeah. things that happen to your body after your children. Yeah. You know? Crazy. <laughs> no, and keeping up with it all. Like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's a thing? Do I yeah. need that? Like, you're just like, and she was so open about it, too. I know. I mean, I I like, mean they had a board. I, mean, I was like, oh, you're like fully showing it on camera. I know. I, mean, I want to see it. I wonder oh, if the unedited version. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, like, she showed us. the unedited version. Yeah. Did it look good? Yeah. It did. Well, when she showed us, it was kind of scary because it had all the stitches. Like, she had just got it That's done when she wondering. showed us. So I was like, whoa. But I'm curious what it looks like now. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I want to see her vagina, but... before and after. Yeah. Yes. I love looking at before Interesting. And okay. So maybe she'll come in and show you. <laughs> yeah. She <laughs> actually would because right? she loves you. So she would. Yeah. Well, I love her. So mm. we'll have to have her on. Mm. Okay. So you were both raised in the Mormon church, mm. Taylor in Utah. You were in Orange County. Mm-hmm. I loved how you said you like to tell people you're from California so they know you're cool. Oh, yeah. So All true. the time. I'm like, no, I'm a California Mormon. You don't understand. <laughs> but I'm a Colorado one because I didn't move till I was 16. Oh, okay. So I was okay. still raised okay. out of state. Okay. So yeah. a little different. Mm-hmm. What is your current relationship like with the church? I'm active in the church. So like I go every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I teach five-year-olds the gospel. Is that the word to yeah. say? It feels so weird saying that. Yeah. I don't know why. And yeah. So yeah, I don't know about you, Tay. Um, I go like here and there. I'm not like a, I've never been like every Sunday goer, yeah. but um, yeah, I go when I want and I can and that's that. Did either of you do a mission trip? I nope. did not. The only girl in our cast was Whitney. She okay. was a missionary. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So growing up in Southern California, how did you end up in Utah? I went to school up there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like my family's Mormon and so traditionally like most yeah. Mormons go to BYU. Right. But I was an athlete, so I was choosing like, oh, I was recruited by UCLA and some other top 10 schools, but my sister ended up being the tennis coach for BYU. And we've come from a big tennis family. So both my sisters are D1 tennis players. And so she's like, you're coming here. So like I did, you know, so that's how I got to Utah. And it was definitely like a culture shock for sure. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you'll stay living there? I do, but I eventually want to go back to California or like have both. My dream is to have a house there, a house in like Orange County. That's my dream. Oh, winters in California. Yeah. And then like everything else I go to Utah. Totally. It's interesting how some things in the Mormon world are accepted and then Mm -hmm. others are shunned. It's like Whitney, you know, scared to do a vibrator commercial. Yeah. But then admits she's done ketamine therapy. It's true. Yeah, that is true. It's an interesting (laughs) contrast. Like no alcohol or coffee, but excessive soda is like as totally as okay, Isn't which also crazy? has caffeine. Yeah. Yes. That's what's interesting. Mormons can have caffeine, I guess. It's but just like, not we're not supposed to have coffee, coffee or, or tea. tea. Which like is the acids in it. I feel like my dad taught me that. Like, because I always ask him, like, why can't we drink coffee? And he was like, the acids in it or something. But that's the thing that nobody knows. Because I've heard acids. I heard it could be addictive. I've heard like so many different things. But yeah. no one truly knows. It's just we're like not supposed to. Yeah, it's more I just guess. like guidelines. Of, I'm going like, to get to the bottom of this. I think every soda right? manufacturer is owned by a Mormon. And maybe that's <laughs> oh really my gosh. The maybe on. Because what? I think oh they God, knew right? if they got rid of soda that a lot of members would be gone because like they can't do <laughs> Need that. something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was yeah. asking my husband. I was like, wait okay the coffee and tea is like it's a stimulant i'm like soda has caffeine he's like no it doesn't no it and does. guess who had to settle the argument alexa <laughs> literally he's like alexa I'm does dead. coca-cola have caffeine she's like yes it does i'm like oh yeah obviously it well, has same caffeine. with monster energy drinks or any energy yeah. drinks and we can have those oh, you can have energy drinks too. interesting and so like me and taylor both drink coffee i hmm. actually just started drinking like a year ago which is so funny um because i didn't realize like iced coffee was a thing and i was like wait this shit's good 
And so, like, I drink coffee you now. You just but... discovered iced coffee? Yes. Wow. I thought it was, like, just, like, a bitter, like, I thought coffee was disgusting, you know? <laughs> and then I tried, like, an iced coffee with, like, the sugar in it. I was yeah. like, oh, shit. I've been telling you this for a while now. I know. I think my, f- I think first you one... made me sip uh-huh, it on, on camera. And I was like, first she's time... trying to get me. She's trying to take me down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting, no, and now I'm, like, fully addicted. Get and my crazy. husband is, too. Yeah. I kind of want to party with Mormons because I feel like it would be, like, everything would be so brand new. I'd be like, I know, right? Done that? Let's try this. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it Seriously, is. Though. It's a culture oh shock, too. You go to BYU and you see their parties. Everyone's sober, just like dancing, having the best time. It's like, is everyone on like antidepressants here? Like, how's everyone so happy? Yes, that's why it's called Happy Valley. No, truly. It's so funny. And wait, what is soaking? Oh, oh. <laughs> I had to talk about this today. I had to give like demonstrations in the show, in my interviews. Like, can you just like demonstrate? I'm oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, let's I know I've heard of it, but. Is it like a sexual thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like a way for like Mormons to like break the rules without breaking them. But you are. It's like Like an over the pants hand job. No, it's it's worse worse than that. Soaking's (laughs) like putting it in, but you're not doing anything. It's just in there. Oh, you're just just not pumping. It's just soaking. But then sometimes they call, have someone come (laughs) shake the bed. Is what they call it. They have a friend come shake it. Put on the bed. So that like it's moving without them actually. Isn't that Uh, that crazy? I'm just like, this is really close friendships. Can you imagine like going to your friend's bedroom? That's what I'm saying. Can you jump on my bed? I mean, I don't. That's crazy if that part's real. Like, I mean, that's shocking. The soaking for sure is real. Wow. The the friend on the bed, that's another level. (laughs) It. And I see it. It's a real thing. I never oh saw God. it when I went to the school. Like, I never, like, obviously experienced that. I just did the real thing, you know. But, like, I guess it's, like, a real thing. But can you imagine being, like, come over at 9 p.m.? Can you shake the bed for me <laughs> at 9 p.m.? Like, can you imagine that? Oh, no. my God. No. It's so embarrassing. Wild. All right. Well, on that uh, soaking note, we're going to take a quick little break, and then we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I asked this next brand for some recommendations on moisturizing and styling products. And they not only gifted me with some amazing products, but they did help educate me on my hair needs. There's nothing basic about Alterna Caviar. And let me tell you why. As pioneers of alternative hair care, Alterna gets its name from being one of the first, if not the first skincare inspired hair care brands on the market. So just like your skin repairing and caring for your hair, I mean, it is vital for it to be healthy. Their products also, it's this is the coolest part. They contain an age control complex, which is based on the science of anti-aging skincare. So it's like, Why not treat your hair the same way we treat our skin? People normally only associate anti-aging with your body's physiological age, but hair aging is different. And as soon as your hair grows out from your head, it starts aging and it's affected by the sun, heat tools, brushing, all types of everyday factors. Alterna's age control complex is formulated with antioxidants to help undo the effects of the intrinsic chemical and environmental aging and protect against future damage. Caviar is not just in the name for fancy marketing. There is actual caviar in the extract in all the products, which is one of the richest sources of omega-3 fatty acids. So true luxury isn't a matter of what something costs, but the expectation that it delivers. I could go on and on about the many benefits of these products, helping with the overall vibrancy, elasticity, and manageability of your hair. But This is one of those things where you just must try it for yourself. So go learn more and pick up some products at your local Ulta or Amazon.com. That's Alterna, spelled A-L-T-E-R-N-A. Alterna, the caviar of hair care. Obviously, self-care is so important, but also smelling good is so important. And that's why I love my new Lumi deodorants because they have the fruitiest, most amazing smells that are like low-key edible. Like the coconut deodorant I have smells so good. It makes me crave a pina colada. Lumi is safe to use anywhere on your body. And that's one of the coolest things about this product is you can use it under your arms, under your boobs. You could use it on your butt, your feet, literally down under wherever you want. And Lumi is proven to block odor all day and control odor for up to 72 hours. 
How, you might ask? Well, unlike your certain traditional deodorants that try to mask odor with a fragrance, Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. More like a pre-odorant, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash, deodorant wipes, that's what I got, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% of their starter pack. Use code GOODASGOLD for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code GOODASGOLD at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. I'm like scared to see the interviews of me trying to be like, so there's docking, there's docking. Like, what's docking? And I was like, uh. Wait, docking? I, I haven't heard that one. Yeah. You don't want to know. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So... Moving on from all of that, uh, <laughs> I have to know, obviously, I don't know if you can say, but where do we stand with Whitney? Yeah. I saw you recently on a TikTok of hers. She's very pregnant. You and Jen mm -hmm. were dancing behind her. So I'm like, I assume you're good. I saw, I think the last one with you was maybe in December. So I'm like, I'm so curious. I did a deep dive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think we're good on my end. It's like I'm fine with her. I think we cleared the air, but you know, you never know with Whitney. So I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, we'll mm -hmm. wait and see. Yeah, we've cleared the air, but like we're not as close as we once were for sure. Still half in the doghouse? Three fourths. Okay. I don't think she like I made that comment earlier this week too. And I was like, girl, do please. you think that mm -hmm. like she came into the season like intending to be the villain or like? No. Okay. She did not think that <laughs> no, she was no, going to no. come off that way. I mean, I think she did certain things for the plot. Yeah. And then I think they backfired and she was like, wait, like I didn't anticipate this happening. That's how I would think. There's other girls who definitely think different, but that was. Yeah. Wild. I think she thought I was probably going to be the villain. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of the audience thought that too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. That's what I was told that I was like, they thought I'd be the villain. Yeah. Uh, Would you say her not showing up to your baby mama launch party was like a big turning point? For sure. I think especially because like all season I backed her up, you know, I was trying to help her, you know, like on camera, off camera. And then like the one thing that I have going on, like the biggest deal in my life right now, you don't show up. But not even that. You don't even send me a text. Mm -hmm. You don't call me. But her husband texted my husband saying, tell Macy, like, congrats. I'm like, your husband's texting my husband, but you couldn't send me a text. Yeah. Right. I just thought it was messed up. So that like really bugged me. And like, we're fine. Like we're cordial, but just not the same as before. It was shocking because you were the voice of reason the entire yeah. season. I felt like you did a really good job of handling both sides and yeah. trying to bring everyone together. So I was shocked that she just like played you like that. Trust me, I was too. Mm -hmm. I was very shocked we to say the least. We were not shocked when she didn't show. We're like, oh, Mace, I like, love that unfollow, unfollow, unfollow. <laughs> like everyone at the same time. So I good. know. <laughs> yeah. I forgot you guys did that. And we yeah. told you were like, she's not going to show. And you were like confident that she would. And we're like, yeah, I just didn't think she would play me like that. Maybe I have high expectations. I, I don't feel like I have high expectations, but I'm like, this is the bare minimum. Like you could have showed up for five minutes just to be like, hey, yeah. I'm here to support you. You're doing so good. Like, I'm going to leave, though. That's right. fine. Like, but she could... shows up for five minutes at Michaela's party <sighs> because what? It's the last night of filming. No, yeah, it was literally like a day or two later. I'm yeah. like, and that's when you want to talk to me? <laughs> right. Oh, like, I cannot wait to see that. I have not seen that yet. Oh, my God. When I tell you, I was floored. I have never been so shocked in my life to see her. I was not ready I to have that conversation. I love when with the gift, all proud. <laughs> like, in the trailer, that's all I've seen. Me and Michaela's faces were like, yeah. I was, so like, good. stunned, good? to say the least. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no, you, you see seen, it all. I've seen the last five minutes of episode eight. That's the only thing I've seen. Uh -huh. And I was like, damn, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> It yeah. was shitty at the time. I was like, what the hell yeah. is going on? And then like now I'm like, well, I see. I mean, it ends on the craziest cliffhanger where it's like, obviously there has to be a season two. Yeah. Mm. Have you started filming yet? No. Not yet. I don't know if we have one. I think, I mean. There will oh, be. There I mean, will I'm be. Not, I'm, I'm confident. Yes. yes. Really? You will Absolutely. have that OC in Utah house oh, yeah. very soon. There will be no. plenty of seasons. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Especially well, like Hulu shows don't just end after one season. No. You know, they're not picking up a show that they only see one season. There's longevity behind it. Even if it's like D'Amelio's did three seasons, but you're still, you're going to have another season. Yeah. And then another. It's, it's too good. Because there's so much. Class. I mean, 
the Affleck storyline we need to know more about. And also, do you, even with Whitney, because we do. I mean, she comes out and reveals finally that her husband did have, I guess, mm-hmm. a tender profile. Do do we know like he's he wasn't meeting right. up with people in real life? From what we know, he did not meet up with people. Yeah. I mean, she I don't know. We asked her. I'm like, is that something you've asked? You know, and I think the answer and she is said no. that she believes whatever he says. And he's a he is a really good guy. So I can't say anything on that. But yeah, it's interesting. It seemed like it wasn't that shocking when she admitted it to you girls. Did you already pretty much know that it was true? Yeah, I think like because it so it came out right when the swinging scandal happened. And then people were like, oh, Whitney's probably like milking this to hide her own scandal. And I was seeing those comments and I was seeing stuff online and I was like, oh, and then like, yeah, she eventually told us, you know, Yeah. but it was still shocking. Like I because when I first asked yeah. her about it, she's like, oh, no, like that's fake. Like she lied to us, you right. know, which I get like I probably would, yeah. too, if I was in her situation. So no, I think she didn't know, wasn't it? Originally, she didn't she know. She didn't know it was true. But when I asked her, she did. Oh, she did. Okay. And I had a weird feeling because she brushed it off so fast when I asked her. It was like, oh, no, like someone just used this picture from like high school. So I was like, oh, yeah. But the way she brushed it off so fast without being like talking about it more, because I feel like mm-hmm. if it wasn't true, I'd be like, oh, my gosh, can you believe that? Like I have right. a full conversation. I was like, OK. Yeah. So I, yeah. I felt something, you know, so, like when she had something to tell us, I was like, I can't I believe that, that was true because. And that was all going down and I saw that. I was like, oh, people are just making up the craziest things well, right now. I think it's shocking <laughs> because it's Connor. And like, yeah. if you know Connor, like you would never think anything like that. But he's like the nicest guy. Even though he messed up, he is like the nicest, like sweetheart, mm-hmm. most supportive. Yeah. Human. But then she kind of aired him out because I think she said like he had this profile pretty much their entire marriage. And then she's like, yeah. and he had a porn addiction. And I was like, well, nobody <laughs> asked for that. Oh. But I mean, thank you for sharing. But like, right? <laughs> this is the problem, though, is like I feel like all of us are such open books. Like yeah. we lay out our dirty laundry like no other like to fault. Like I'm like talking about having like nervous diarrhea, I guess, in the show. I didn't know that until one of the previous podcasts. Like you get the nervous diarrhea. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was no, like, but did I say that? No, but that's why it's so good because it's just <sighs> so like just unintentionally funny you'll just be like in a scene you're like ketamine therapy wait what, wait, what? what are we talking about yeah. now oh my <laughs> gosh yeah. we've both done it <laughs> yeah wait yeah. okay so tell me about that because i'm so intrigued by ketamine therapy it's honestly super cool what kind did you do did you do I like did the, the IV. yeah the ivy and it was intense like i know demi has a, a whole she's obsessed with it and she has like a whole thing where she's like i discovered why i got divorced in my relationship this and this flourish and i'm like wow I was floating in the clouds as like a cartoon starfish, but (laughs) like, I don't know what experience you had. That wasn't mine, but I felt great after I was leaving there, like so happy. Like by the third session for me, third or fourth is when I like saw a human in it for the first time, which sounds silly, but I'm always seeing like animations. And then, Uh then I was like, oh, I see why people do this. Cause I Mm -hmm. saw like, it was very like motivating and I felt like really happy. And like, I feel like it would carry into like daily life, but it is interesting. I honestly feel like it was just like, kind of like doing drugs like I, it was definitely helpful yeah well it is I mean, you, can, it, 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 <laughs> you can do academy well, yeah. recreationally yeah exactly. it just doesn't feel like it because like you have a nurse in your room they're giving you mm-hmm. an IV and they're like coming in and doing your blood pressure so that's why to me it didn't feel like yeah a right. drug right as like for mental health and stuff so I was like okay I'll try it my parents freak though they're like don't do that yeah it's like that's a horse tranquilizer and I was like well I like it's it so you crazy know, I'll try to it think out. about that though I have know. you ever done it yeah yeah I did two two sessions I get really sick but I feel like if you're not in the right mindset it really is where your mind is at and I feel like I wasn't and so for me I was like kind of more like panicking in it um but I feel like good the next day that's where I'm like okay is that worth it because like you feel better and that's what it's for is to help like your depression too and anxiety yeah so like it was worth it like after but in the moment it's hard because I get I get you can like throw up and so I got sick every time. Yeah, you could take Zofran or something though, but I feel like sometimes like I just tell myself to surrender, which sounds so weird, but yeah. like it, it can say. get really trippy. So you just have to yeah. like go with it, like yes. relax. Like, and if you don't, you can panic and then you don't enjoy mm-hmm. it. Right? Yeah. Totally. You can fight it. It's weird. He's but like, I feel don't like fight if you've it. done drugs before, not to out myself, but then you're like, oh, it's <laughs> not. It's like, then you're like, okay, it's not that crazy. But I feel right. like for someone who's never done anything or had alcohol or anything and goes and does it, I could see how that could be. Yeah. Crazy. I can imagine. Yeah. Season two, we take the Mormon girls to Central America for ayahuasca trip. <laughs> oh, no. Oh it's really eye opening. I no. heard, <laughs> I heard I mean, you throw up from that. And that I freaks can't. me out. Uh, I would yeah. do ketamine therapy, yeah. but the ayahuasca freaks me out. I've actually, so many people have like, you should go do that. And I'm like, because it's no. around us too in Utah. Mm-hmm. So I really could do it. But. I'm like, it's too nervous. I have too. a phobia of throw up. So I'm like, no. I heard everyone throws up. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I think that's not. how you rid yourself. No, is I, what I, I can't do that. I'm like, keep those demons in there. I don't want them out then. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
Okay, a little more on Whitney. So it seemed like she just harbored a lot of animosity against Taylor, you know, throughout the season. And it made me think, are we missing part of the story here? You know, I mean, obviously shows are edited. We Mm -hmm. don't get to see everything. But then she reveals that she actually was jealous, but it was because she felt like she got more backlash about the video dancing with her baby who just had RSV, which, Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand the backlash from that. Like, your child was just hospitalized and sick, and you're dancing behind them. Mm -hmm. Do you think everyone's going to be like, oh, yay, it's not like the baby was smiling. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think... I know I feel for her because I've obviously been in that situation where everyone hates, like, they're hating on you, you know? Yeah. So I, like, gave it grace and I was like, yeah, that was probably not the best thing to do. But at the end of the day, like, I felt like she, her baby was okay. I think she had just got good news and then she, like, wasn't thinking and did it, right? Like, yeah, it was a mistake. And that's, yeah. like, I feel like I've been there so many times where I'm like, I didn't think it was the end of the world. But again, you're asking me that's done to <laughs> yeah. a mistake. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. But yes, there was a lot of like resentment built up, I think, over time. And again, she's not seeing my DM. She's not seeing all the negative comments. She's not doing research of how much shit I'm getting. So like you're not seeing it. So I understand why you think you're not you're getting more than me. But in no world, I think she was getting more than me, especially. I wasn't even in your DMs and I saw the hate. Yeah. 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 Yeah, It's all like I have actual hate pages out there, like specifically to hate, you know, and so. Um, yeah, I think, it's, and especially after the rest, that's like a huge deal, you know, it was all over. I'm like, there is no way that you can compare. I think I'm definitely win the hate game there. But I felt for her, you know, in that, how she's feeling. Her feelings are valid. But, um, I mean, still people haven't moved past it. But I feel like in her case, that's something, okay, sh- maybe not the best of time. Let's move on. Yeah. yeah. I feel like people should give her that grace. But, um, Again, you're asking me, so. <laughs> I'm just like, aren't you scared? I mean, you know what it's like to go through reality world oh, yeah. where people are like, I want to be more famous or popular. And like, they're really young and like, they haven't even gotten the taste of it. This is season I one. Like, I, I'm actually excited for what's going to happen on season two or three. But oh, like, right. I'm also just like, oh. I said, what do you mean bro- by like, that? There's going to be broken friendships is what I'm oh, saying. Like, sure. There's going to be so, oh, really? and like, I think there's going to be backstabbing. I think there's going to be like I people. I feel that. Throwing yeah, each other coming. under the bus, but like, mm. and it'll be good for us because we get excited about so that. It's so bad. Yeah. But like, I guess that's the reaction I, we've been getting. So I, in my head, they're like, because they're like, so tell us about this. And we're like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, okay, you haven't seen the show. Like, they're like giving us, like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to ask you here again in a week. Yeah. Like, we're all great friends. And they're like, well, obviously, you haven't oh, seen anything. We're like, yeah. <laughs> so you haven't seen what everyone said behind each other's back. <laughs> no. So that's, here's the thing with reality TV. There's so many great things where it's like you get to see it. There's nothing normal about it, right? Mm -hmm, Like you go back in time, but it's great to get to see other people's perspectives. It's Mm -hmm. also very hurtful to see other people's perspectives when it's about you. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you more insight on, oh, that's why she was feeling this way. And, you know, sometimes it can help repair friendship. And Mm -hmm. then sometimes it also can harm a friendship. I started reality TV when I was like 26, 27. Mm Mm-hmm. So kind of a similar age. And yeah. I mean, it's been a wild ride. So. Oh, no. What's your I advice? Would just, oh, advice? It? I yeah. would just say, you know, to try and give each other grace where you can, because none of you really know what you're doing. It is so different to do reality TV than it is to do TikTok. Yeah. And uh, I'm really good friends with the D'Amelio family. Mm -hmm. They, you know, blew up on TikTok in the Mm -hmm. pandemic. And then they went on to do a Hulu show as well. And it is a different level. It's a different audience. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously family. So it's different with them. Yeah. But with you girls, you know, you are a group of friends. And there are going to be things that people say that are going to hurt your feelings but yeah. mm-hmm. hopefully i feel like they need a reunion you know I like know. don't just jump into season two like bring we it need, on baby because mm-hmm. that's an opportunity where you have watched the whole season mm-hmm. and you gotta talk about your feelings yeah and Ugh. it like i said it can repair or it can hurt friendships yeah. and i've been on both ends of that spectrum yeah mm-hmm. but overall i think it really can help you grow as a person so mm-hmm. just take any of that negativity, turn it into positivity and just know that 
you're trying to be the best version of yourself. And anyone who really loves you is going to understand that and they're going to give you grace. Yeah. And I feel like I don't worry about us. Like, I feel like we give people grace pretty easily. I don't know. But I do worry about some other people on the cast. Like, I feel like we have pretty thick skin. Like, Mm -hmm. you could say whatever to me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, sorry you feel that way. Like, how can I fix it? Yeah. But I don't feel like everyone takes that approach. And I think that's what is a little nerve wracking. And I feel like, Sheena, you could offer maybe even extra advice only because I think Dakota is going to get a lot of hate kind of from the audience, too. And I know that Brock was kind of in that situation when you first started dating him. So maybe you could offer. I don't know, because, you know, when you really love your man and you don't want to see him like people tearing him down because he was having a bad moment. on Yeah, no, my current husband started on the show our ninth season. Mm -hmm. I had already gotten engaged, married and divorced on the show before I met him. And then the first season, we got engaged. His second season on our 10th, we got married. Mm -hmm. And now the audience has really grown to love him. But it's taken a few years. Mm -hmm. His first year, I mean, he took a beating. Like, the women were not letting him get away with Mm -hmm. any shit. Brought up everything in his past. Twisted things. And, I mean, he was very hated. Okay. And... uh, I would just say, you know, if this is this is your man, this is your baby daddy, this is the person you want to be with, do not let what other people say break your relationship up because it's so easy to listen to the outside noise. Mm-hmm. But I just knew at his core who he was and I wasn't going to let things in his past or actions on the show determine our future. I'm like, yeah. I know who you are. You are my future. And everything's amazing now. That's so yeah. you just got to stick okay. it out. It's going to be tough. Taylor's notorious for not listening to anyone's advice. So I don't think I'm worried about that. <laughs> no. She thinks she wants to do the opposite of what you tell her. So. Well, I guess he, that is his biggest fear right now. He's like yeah. in a, a, you know, he's kind of been panicking, like yeah. stress, anxious. So why is it you think you'll be hated? No, I mean, you know, I just think one, um, first, what I love about these like women led shows is like you guys are the breadwinners. And Mm so already I think like people are like really empowered by that because I think that we have a different perspective. Like we're coming this we know trad wives right now. We know a lot of that. And so to see like you guys are taking care of the household. Mm -hmm. But then sometimes you see the men still controlling and then you get really angry because you're like, you don't even pay for the bills. Like, right. It makes me angry. And so Mm -hmm. when they get that controlling, I think that's where it'll come from where it's like I run shit over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. think it'll be a lot of more of more of that. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I stress. I know he's like really stressing and I'm like, it is what it is. But he is. won't be the most hated. No. <laughs> and that's yeah, the thing. He that. was more, I felt like front and center, but Zach. Yeah. Like, can we talk about him for him. a second? Oh, I feel, I'm, I feel for him. Cause that's all I've heard. I have heard. So. Yeah. I mean, I know you said that controlling men give you the ick. I was going to say the ick. Um, I didn't know if I said that, but I was like, the ick. Yeah. So, obviously, I know you and Dakota, are you guys in a better place now? I feel like we are, but I don't know how he feels behind the scenes. He probably hates me. He hasn't seen the show yet. But I don't know exactly. (laughs) Trust me when I tell you. I told my husband this so many times. I'm like, he's going to hate me. Is he going to let, is he going to hate me? Well, I'm. Uh, no, but I will say I, that that car You look ride like you're being a good friend. Was that awkward. was awkward. Oh my god! It was like, me, should we get a soda? Um, <laughs> oh no! I was like, what do we do? Oh, like, yeah. I'm so confused. But in the finale, it shows you on the phone with Jenna, and she says, "I'll tell you everything." Did yeah. she reveal? I can't say, you guys. You we can't. You, I'm not saying say two. what, but she revealed something. You're saying without saying it. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> I can't give anything away. See, you're been, already good at that. Yeah, I've been instructed to keep these lips sealed Media on that finale. trained. Okay, so then <laughs> we'll go back to Zach. Um, also, I noticed whenever Jen is on the screen, it has her full name, Jen Affleck. Is that for like clout? Probably. I mean, I'm like, why do we have her full name? You guys don't refer to her as Jen Affleck. No. No. It's, just, it's weird. Yeah. Everyone yeah. is just first name, but then the whole season, it's Jen Affleck. Mm. Interesting. Like, has she know. met Ben? No, I think he's only like a third cousin. Okay. Like, I don't even yeah. think they've ever even seen him before. Does he know that they but, exist? Like, that's great. <laughs> I don't know. Well, he, he might know. now. <laughs> the right. coming out. Okay. Well, back to Zach. So before going to Chippendales, he told Jen that being divorced and taking to care of two kids would be tough. And then after you guys are all there, he's still threatening her with this. She disappears at 2 a.m., reemerges the next day. He, like, has gambling issues. I mean, it, it seems like there's there's a lot. 
But with her saying she's going to step away now from mom talk, who's paying for medical school? Not him, I don't think. Oh, yeah. I it's don't know. definitely good her question. or her in-laws, I think. Yeah. I know they help them. Her in-laws? I think so. I mean, oh, I can't. Oh, yeah. I don't want to speak. Parents yeah, for, okay. I don't want to speak for her, but I don't. I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, that's what. Because I mean, it was very clear. I mean, yeah. she was taking care of the household while he. Yeah. Had, yeah. You know, he had ten more, ten more years of school. Yeah. But he doesn't want her to do mom talk. I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. Like this, this is the money. Yeah. And also, I'm sorry, twenty five hundred dollars to go gamble. Brock's lucky if he would get a hundred dollars from no, me. Right? Same you with my life. Like, I felt I same. felt cheap too because I think I gave Dakota like hair. Hey, God, have some fun. It was like literally nothing, <laughs> and it was like, oh, when she said, that, I was like, dang, I feel bad. No, well, I'm especially the same. if he had a gambling problem, you're gonna give him twenty five hundred dollars. I was floored when yeah. she said that. I was like, you're kidding, right? Wild. I no, I can't with yeah. that situation. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Um. You've both been very open, you know, sharing your motherhood journeys, you with your postpartum struggles and you with your fertility path. Mm -hmm. So I a couple questions for you, Taylor. When did you first realize that you were struggling with your postpartum mental health? And has each pregnancy been a different experience for you? Um, I would say they've all been pretty much the same until this last one. I think obviously for like in my situation, I'm like, mm -hmm not married this time going through all this stuff on top of it i think it's like messed with me a little bit more um i feel like with o so my son ocean i think he's four now but i feel like at that time that's when we kind of started like messing around you know and so I've, i might have been like so distracted that i didn't even realize like my mental health is like not good mm -hmm. and then i think at that point when everything blew up like obviously my mental health is not good yeah and then this time around i feel like going through all this stuff it's more like situational so i can't really say if it's just like the hormones but i feel like mm -hmm. definitely I think my the world is very loud. Like, I feel like there's a lot going on around yeah. me. So I feel like it's hard to like pinpoint. Like I asked my psychiatrist, I'm like, can you help me to figure out like, where do you think I'm like really struggling? She's like, it's just hard because there's something new. Like every time there's a lot, there's like a loud pass too, you know? So just trying to navigate it and give you the tools of like, this is like how you handle situations and whatnot. But I don't think there's like a, a time I can say that I yeah. noticed. No. EMDR therapy, though, I will say heavy, incredible. But <laughs> I mean, it's it's intense. Yeah. But I've done that as well. And I feel like weights lifted off me yeah. after I've done it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird. It kind of gets you like through your fears. They say they try to totally. put it in your face so you like can get through it. Yeah. To it. Yeah. I've only done a little bit. I haven't done like major work on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I yeah, I've been going to, like my psychiatrist, like which is really cool because they they tell you a lot of brain like scientific like things you know where yeah. therapists are there to help you mentally but like right. this one's like this is why you're feeling this way mm -hmm. because if this was triggered and it's like really cool to be like i'm not crazy like my brain was like literally like thing yeah like you know it's really cool to learn but absolutely anyways <laughs> how is your ivf journey going macy it's good we have two babies in the freezer okay so we might unthaw those suckers this year i don't know Ooh. i'm still deciding like there's so much going on and i keep delaying like i'm supposed to well not supposed to but i was gonna try to get pregnant last summer mm-hmm Everything going on, I was just like, we're going to maybe film, maybe not. And I was like, well, I don't want to really be pregnant. I don't know if I see that. <laughs> Until I waited. And then like now it came like this next summer. And I was like, oh, oh. there's just so much going on. You know, yeah. so I feel like I always delay. And I think it's just scary because it's like the unknown. Like we have two embryos and I want two more kids. I'm like, oh, I want it to work, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so right now we're just kind of waiting until yeah. we're like ready. I don't know when that will be, but it yeah. might be this year. might be next year. We'll see. I'm sending you all the good yes, vibes. all the vibes. What was the inspiration behind starting Baby Mama? So you have natal nutrition gummies yes. for moms. I'm so mad I was going to bring you some and I completely oh. forgot. I'll send you some. Okay. Just give me no. an address. I'll send them over. Yeah, perfect. I would love that. Even yeah, if you're so not trying to have a baby. I know you said you're done. But. I Yeah. The, I froze my eggs. I We're love it. deciding right okay, now. Okay. My husband just got his sperm evaluated, which yes. we got a call actually today from the doctor and he said he's never seen sperm so good. Okay. I'm like, oh, of hell course. yeah. Of Brock course. got that good sperm. Yeah, right? he's like, yeah. whatever he's doing. I was like, and he didn't listen to doctor's orders. He did the cold plunge the night before. He went in the sauna. He did everything the doctor do said don't do. And he was like, 191 million. Somebody I was like, wait, what? So You're like, okay. I'm <laughs> like, great. You know, because if they said like, oh, I don't know, then I'd be like, okay, we're good. One and done. Yeah, you're like, see? <laughs> but we're but having the no. surrogate talk. And oh, I love it. We'll see. But yes. I also struggle with if we, you know, 
thought all of the eggs fertilized them all like, what if I have six embryos? And that's, we only want one more kid. so hard. So I was what almost do I happy do? I got two because I was like, I want two more kids. Yeah. And I don't have to have that, like, that decision, you know? Yeah. And what we were thinking we'd do if we got a ton is to tell a doctor, like, put in the healthiest one. Don't tell mm-hmm. us if it's a boy, girl, whatever. Right. Just put whatever is healthiest in and, like, we'll see what happens kind of yeah. thing. Um, but the reason why I started Baby Mama is because I because doing IVF. I did um, IVF the first time in 2019. Mm-hmm. We ended up getting one embryo. But during it, I was like why do I feel like there's nothing like to take for this? Like specifically for like before you're pregnant, like your doctor right. just like take your prenatal. And when you go to your postpartum checkup, it's like, oh, just take a prenatal. Why isn't there something specific for like where I'm at in my journey? And that's what kind of sparked baby mama. And because I, I don't love taking pills. I will. But I'm like, I feel like gummies are kind of a treat. They're so yeah. much better. So much better. And so I like I want to make them super clean. I was like, make them the cleanest they can be without tasting like absolute garbage. And so I feel like that's what we did. They still taste good. But they're like vegan, gluten free, non GMO, like all the things. And so we have fertile mama, which is before you get pregnant. But you can also take it if you're not wanting to have babies anymore because it's supposed to be good for like PMS and like okay. all those kind of symptoms because it has like chase berry in it, which is known to be good for oh, that. Nice. And then our prego mama is like your typical prenatal, like with all the vitamins and stuff you need. But we also have raspberry lace, which is help, supposed to help tone your uterus and get you ready for birth. And then we have new mama, which is our postpartum gummy. And we have certain ingredients to help with like milk supply, like water retention after birth and different things like that. And like obviously all the vitamins you need to like, you know, survive. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, so I'm super, super happy with how everything went. Launched it on the show and that was chaos trying to launch a brand yeah. on the show. Like when I tell you, I think my hair was like falling out everywhere. <laughs> like I'm not even kidding, but it was really worth it just to get it done. And yeah, now we're just really working hard awesome. on the back end. Well, congratulations. And it's great that they were able to show this on the show because I mean, that's just going to reach so many more people. So that's the hope. Yeah, you're yeah. Like, so hard. Be ready. Right? <laughs> so I was grinding to get it ready for the show. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. No, so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, couple more things to wrap it up. I have to know, what did you think of the pregnancy stick in the cake? Okay, well, we haven't seen it. I, <laughs> oh, I heard about it because I so, get paired with her for yeah, interviews, and I was how like, Whitney told her family that she was it, pregnant. It was oh. the one she peed on. It was the one yeah, she peed she on. Yeah, she said the like, cap was on it. I am like a germaphobe <laughs> in general. I was like, you could not pay me to eat that no. cake. I'm sorry. Yeah. I haven't seen it. That's so funny though. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's funny, but I'm such a germaphobe. Like I. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> Can we say where Whitney and Jen are with mom talk? It's hard to say. I feel like yeah. we don't even know because I feel like they'll tell us one thing, but I don't know what they're I thinking know, they change behind their the minds scenes. A lot. It's like, yes, no. Yes, of course. And it's like, I, I don't know. So I have no idea. Yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and see even for us. Yeah. Are people trying to like join mom topic or are people coming up and like wanting to be your friends, like literally applying and trying to be? Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Actually, I've had so many people like come up from like I haven't heard of from a long time. And they're like, let's hang out. Let's catch up. And people really trying. I'm like, mm, this is kind of weird. Yeah. Like, You're going to get that even more now with the show. Yeah. 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 yeah it's interesting. I was like, yeah, I, I mean, it looks like a fun group. Mm-hmm. And I know? think when it was going on too, like there's some people who would make videos about us because they didn't like us because it seemed like we were like mean girls and making these videos together. Mm-hmm. It's like it's not inclusive for all. But it's like we would love for every mom in Utah County to come or in Utah. But like, how can we find a venue? Like, how can we like, <laughs> right. I don't think yeah. people understand we were doing this like for collaboration for career. And then like it was also we became friends like doing it. And so I, some people thought it was like mean girl vibes. I feel like, like that's not, our biggest misconception. Yeah. Mean girl. Yeah. Like, but, like fan, I feel like, like it's the opposite. The like no one's well or something. I mean, yeah, but, but. we're nice. <laughs> I feel like for the most part, like it's yeah, we're not mean. No, no, all. you're not. I'm actually like right. I thought you were gonna be so much more mean. Really? And I'm like, Wait, oh, you're really? too nice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> really? Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I get told that so much, especially like as in person. They're like, you're so much nicer than I thought, and I was like. I must come off as a bitch online because no. I'm like, what? I get told that too my whole life. I think you just have bad RBF or something. Yeah. yeah. People just, they love to hate. They love yeah. to hate on a pretty girl who can dance and puts it oh, all I out can. there. You know? I can't yeah. dance. I could twerk, but I can't do anything else. <laughs> hey, that's more than I can do. <laughs> yeah. You tell me to do a TikTok dance, don't sign me up. <laughs> yeah. But also it's like if you did include, you know, every Mormon mom, I mean, it would just become like a flash mom. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's, it's like not realistic. Day. Yeah. yeah it, exactly. It's not. Unfortunately, I, we would love that. And No, I think, yeah, it would be so much fun. I think we, that's what's hard is a lot of people yeah. think we're mean because of that. But I'm like, it's, what what could we do? I don't know right. how we're supposed to. No, yeah. and we kind of all gathered the group because of like we knew which ones this was like a career for, and that took mm-hmm. it very seriously. So yeah. those were the ones we're like, yeah, let's do this, you know. Yeah. Where others are doing it for fun and great, and that's awesome. But like we're doing this for work too. Yeah. Totally. You know, so it's not worth our time. Like. Yeah. You know. 
What is the like content schedule like? Like how often do you girls get together? Who comes up with the ideas? Yeah, we all come with our own ideas. I feel like lately I'm the one hosting. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm trying I'm like I'm trying to keep it alive. Well, not necessarily, but like I always end up hosting. I have really huge windows. So the lighting She's the best lighting. We always go for nice. the lighting, right? <laughs> for um, sure. But everyone comes with like their own ideas. And so like we usually do like one person at a time, like do your group video and everyone gets one before people get two. Although mm-hmm. some people break that rule. Mm-hmm. Not you, but like other people in the group will be like, I have another one. We're like, wait a second. <laughs> not everyone's gotten one yet. <laughs> yeah. You gotta wait your turn. So we go one at a time and then like if you wanna make videos with certain people, you can break off and do that. But yeah, group group ones first, and yeah. yeah, and I feel like matching has always been our thing. Like I feel like it catches the I eye. Love that. Like you're mm-hmm. like, this is weird. This what will go back, you know? And I like notice that it like get, grabs people's attention. I feel like it's weird. I don't know why. And so we're planning that. on doing it even tonight at our yeah. premiere. We're all wearing the same color for Wait, both of I our premieres. That. We're just Amazing. not hel- helping our cult situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. They see the blue jackets. Now they're gonna see the matching dresses. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's gonna be bad. Yeah, so cute. Well, I can't wait to see that mm-hmm. content. So. We obviously, we have the new show, Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, full season, now available on Hulu, where you can find Taylor Macy and all of the girls. Um, But tell me, what's next for you all, Taylor? Any plans to get married? (sighs) I'm just taking it day by day, (laughs) I will say. I feel like everyone's going to want to know with how the season is. I know. And honestly, I need to see the season. We'll see if Dakota wants to stick by my side. Is that pressuring you? No. Okay. No, good. I just, he's anxious. So I really want him to see the show and see if he really wants to be with me after. Cause I'm like, I'm like so scared. Like, I don't know how it looks. Yeah. Like, Cause you know, his fear is, I'm like, uh, uh, like he's like, I fear that I really show that I'm like in love with you and I want this. And I, I fear that you look like you want nothing to do with me. And that's like how thing, he thinks. And that's not the case. Like, I'm just scared of marriage. Like, especially after yeah. what I went through, I just want to, um, you know, get through these hard times and then, you know, do that. Because look at, you know, yeah. I just ended a marriage. Yeah. Like, I, I just want some time. That's totally. all I've wanted. No, I think it's very clear you love him. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. I yeah. think that's been his fear. Um, but yeah, taking it day by day. Reality TV yeah. is very, I think he knows. He's it's like, a lot. It's a lot on a relationship. Yeah. And, and we're, that's why we're in this heavy therapy. Like, yeah. Because we want to for our son. At least try. Totally. And like, we love each other. We've had like our differences. But right now it's like, I don't want another broken home for him, another child of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so I will do whatever it takes to like get through this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think everything, I know you haven't seen it all yet, but every conversation that you have, the things that you express to him that, you know, you still worry about, still think about, I think it's all so relatable and Mm -hmm. like you definitely understand where you're coming from. It doesn't look like you don't want to be with him or anything like that. It just looks like, you know, you have a past Mm -hmm. and there are some things in the beginning of the relationship Mm -hmm. and... I think it's all very clear. So Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want it to come off differently. But no. Yeah, it's been a rough we're taking it day by day. That's all I gotta say. Day no, by day. That's think, all you can do. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think you come yeah. off like I think you will change opinions for people who might have had an opinion about you. Yeah. I think that you will change their opinion and they will become obsessed with you. Really? I think so good. too. Good. Both of you. Yeah. Macy's like most what of you. Me? Yes. I'm like, Voice of reason, absolutely. Yeah. No, oh, no, I've been told like you're the peacemaker. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, I mean, you really and, are, though. No, it was it was such a fun season to watch. I really enjoyed binging it. I watched the first, and I was like, shit. Now I gotta watch all of them. Oh my god, because gosh. I couldn't stop. So. Well, you're like, wait, you're see. like, oh, this is gonna tear apart here soon. Let's stay tuned. <laughs> the Salt Lake Housewives are gonna be jealous. There's like new queens. I know. In town. Uh-oh. I know. Younger new queens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Well, thank you, ladies, so thank much you. for being here, getting thank into you. some shenanigans with us. I know you have a premiere party to get ready for. Yes. I can't wait to see the TikToks thank later. Thank you. Thank you. you. I'm going to go binge your show. Yeah, yes. you've got Same. a lot. Yeah. Yes, oh, I'm going to yeah. catch up. I'm going to be like, well, I was just on the podcast. What the heck? <laughs> so thank you for having me. Yeah, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for listening and watching you guys. Be back next week. Bye. Bye.